The name of this video is Work on Circuit. In fact, in the previous couple of videos, we investigated the forces acting on circuits which carry a current, let's say a steady current, in presence of an external magnetostatic field. In this case, we want to investigate what is the work due to those forces. And so in order to do so, let us first consider the following example, where we have a filiform and rigid circuit. So this circuit is a loop, which I will sketch here in this fashion. This loop here and eventually goes into a pair of tracks looking like that, which continue. This is our circuit. In order to close it up, I need to have something which is free to move. So there is a little ring here, also conducting as well as here. And these two rings are connected and this part of the circuit is free to move along these two tracks, okay? So this point up here, I call it point capital P, and eventually it could move all the way here to another point, let's call it capital P uh, prime. Down here, this is point capital Q, and it can move to this point, which I will call capital Q prime, similarly. Okay, and so there will be an area eventually which is, uh, we will define in a, in a few minutes. All right, so this uh, circuit is oriented in this uh, direction. So this is our gamma. It carries a steady current I. Let's hypothesize that this steady current I is also in the same direction, so positive with respect to the orientation uh, gamma of the loop. Let us define the length of this wire which can move, all passive filiform, as I said there. This length, we call it uh, dL, whereas the infinitesimal quantity, I want to displace it, that is from Q to Q prime, or similarly, P to P prime, this we call it dL tilde. So this quantity is dL tilde, and this quantity is dL. dL is what actually can move, it's free to move. So let's de define a few unit vectors. So this unit vector here is unit vector T, P, P prime. This unit vector here is T, P, Q. So T, P, Q goes in the same orientation as gamma to close up this loop. T, P, P prime goes from P to P prime, and it's the same as Q, Q prime as a direction. All right. So in this way, this area here, this area, D, A, is given by D, L tilde times D, L. Okay, it's the area of this little rectangle here. And the normal unit vector n to this area is uh, given by n, which points in this direction. So let's sketch it like this. We don't see it. And then eventually we see it. I'm exaggerating it to make sure that we know that it points in this direction, away from the board. Okay, it's a, a semi-it's a 3D sketch, so it goes inside. Okay. And in fact, this n. If you look at it carefully, it's nothing but T P P prime. So if I cross T P P prime with T P Q, I get exactly N. Good. So now we have all the uh, unit vectors which we need in order to solve this problem. And uh, in addition, we want to hypothesize that all the transformations, so in order to move this element, of course, we need a little hand here, which pulls 
this element of length dl along these tracks, it pulls them. And so there is an external force that does a mechanical action on this PQ element, infinitesimal element. So this mechanical action, we assume that it's done in such a way that it just barely outbalances the uh, force due to the magnetostatic field. In fact, this circuit is within a certain magnetostatic field B0, characterized by this field lines, so this is our B0, etc., which is everywhere, okay? So this is our B0. An external magnetostatic field generated by some unknown current distribution somewhere in space. And so this external field, in presence of this current I, results in a magnetic force on this DL, as we calculated in a couple of videos ago. And so now I do a mechanical action to just counterbalance it a tiny bit more so that I actually can move it in a quasi-static fashion. So we want a quasi-static transformation. This means we encounter already this in 242. This implies that the final overall acceleration vector associated with this transformation, when I do the difference of the mechanical force I apply and the magnetic net force, is approximately a tiny bit larger than zero. Okay, so there is a motion, but it's almost at all time equal to zero, so that is a quasi-static, that's why this tilde down here is a quasi-static transformation. In addition, we want to maintain a steady current throughout the whole experiment. So everything is done in such a way that uh, I remain steady for each T. I remain steady for each T. So that's the other condition we want to use here. So under these conditions, what is the work due to the internal forces dW due to the internal forces to move this element? Obviously, this has to be an infinitesimal force acting on infinitesimal element. So it's a DF. And again, the reason why it's a DF is because it's acting on a DL. Definition of work of internal forces is DF dotted with the direction along which I'm moving it, which is T, P, P prime, obviously, because I'm moving in this direction. So it's this D vector that rules there, times the le this length, which is DL tilde. That's the displacement which my mechanical action does. And so this is the work opposite to that mechanical action that is of the internal forces. So this DF has to be intended as the uh, net magnetic force acting on this element as per our previous calculation. All right, great. So now that we know that, what is in fact this quantity df? So now this is the general law which we know. We can write down here our df. We know from our previous calculation that for a filiform rigid wire, the only thing that matters is the external magnetostatic field B0 in this case. And so this has to be equal to the current I, which is the one carried by this circuit times the element dl along which is carried, in this case is actually dl, it's not dl tilde, because the force is on this element, and I'm moving in this direction, but now the force is on this element, so it's clearly dl, direction along this direction is, in this case, is tpq. This quantity, this quantity, I need to cross it with the external magnetostatic field, and the only one that counts in presence of a rigid circuit is only B0. So it's I dL T PQ vector B0. So now let's put these two together. If we do that, what we obtain up here is that uh, dW, so the work of the internal force is going to be dF, which is I dL T PQ crossed B0, so this is my force. This force has to be dotted with TPP prime along the direction in which I'm moving this element, DL tilde. This quantity, now here, we can use 
the cyclic property of the uh, of this triple product so cyclic property due to the cyclic property and also due to the definition here the a is dl tilde dl dl times dl tilde is da so this quantity here it's nothing but i times the a this i flip this tp prime i take it to the first term here and so i need to do the vector product t pp prime cyclic property crossed it with the tpq the result of that dotted with b naught we already know the tpp prime vector tpq is nothing but n so this eventually gives us nothing but i do, uh, times uh, b naught now this is commutative i can use the commutative property of the dot product so i can flip this over and so it's b naught dot n da but what is b naught dot n da that's nothing but the flux of v through this area here and so the work dw the infinitesimal work it's nothing but i times the flux d phi that's the way we call it this is nothing but the flux d phi as a matter of fact great so the infinitesimal work it is a very important result is given by the current times d phi critically not circuit theory later on if you will encounter those in your career all right so this is the infinitesimal law that rules the work associated with the infinite with the quasi with the filiform with the filiform circuit with the steady current suppose now that i want to move this circuit by a finite quantity let's call it capital l well in that case what happens is that we can generalize to the case of a finite length and therefore the total work w which is the integral of dw is going to be nothing but uh, the integral of between phi at some distance zero to phi at some distance capital L of i d phi and these two quantities we can call them for simplicity so i times phi at L we call it in the final configuration minus phi in the initial configuration where this is the final configuration and this is the initial configuration phi at zero is phi in and phi at capital L is phi fin, fin final great so this is the total work which means we can summarize the total work w for a finite translation in this case as i delta phi so this is the work for a finite translation for this circuit with this track can we further generalize this to any circuit? Yes, we can do that. So more in general, suppose that we have two circuits with a generic shape. For simplicity, I assume that the, actually it's a single circuit. It's a single circuit with a generic shape. So this is my circuit with generic shape that carries, so this is gamma that carries a current I. Okay, so this is a steady current I, and this is a single circuit with this generic shape. And I translate it by a certain quantity so I move it from here, let's say, to uh, here in such a way that I end up with the same circuit, but translated by this amount. So this will be my translation here. This vector is how much I translated it. it can be a finite distance. Let's call it a vector R. Okay, translation of vector, capital R. So now in this case, the overall flux difference delta phi, what is that? Well. Obviously, this region, so we, we need to assume that the magnetostatic field B0 here, this field is in general non uniform, which is the most general, the most general case, non uniform field. Okay, it's a non uniform field, yet. Any contribution from this region here, of course, when I do delta phi, 
phi final minus phi initial, whatever is in here, this doesn't contribute because even if it's non-uniform, this is the intersection between these two circuits obviously doesn't contribute. So what we actually need to compute is this positive, this final flux here in this region, and I indicated with this plus, with this, in this shape to say that it's plus positive, this final flux, We need to minus it with the initial flux, which is in the initial configuration, that is this minus flux here. And of course, I don't care whatever is in the interception in this case. So this is my delta phi, the delta phi, which eventually goes in here. Okay. Not that if I had, if I don't move the circuit, so obviously, if I do not move the circuit, so if the circuit is here and after some time it stays there, clearly in this case the difference of the flux is zero. So the work is obviously in the case equal to zero. Okay? Similarly, if I move from this configuration to this configuration, in this case a little bit more is different, this is more generic. This one is a special case of that when we need to do all these flux here the flux through this loop minus the flux to this loop. And here I know the students, again, have lots of problems. And why is that? Because they say, okay, these two fluxes are the same. So here I can kind of understand there is an interception, but here I should get zero. You do not get zero. And why is that? Why I already said it. I want you to discuss in Piazza why in this case, I want you to discuss because I know that this is always a reason for debate. So this is in general different than zero. And I want you to explain to me in Piazza why this is the case. Why is not zero in general? All right. So now that we know that, it is also worth uh, saying that we do not have to take into account this rigid circuit for this uh, self flux, that is the, uh, the field, the flux due to the current I itself, because that's, uh, uh, that's belong, okay, I, I, will I will just state it because it's related to this question. So I wanted to think why we, don't, we do not need to take into account for the self-flux. So what I want you to think about why in general this is different than zero and why is uh, uh, the self-flux not necessary. And then this will, uh, should give rise to a discussion, which is quite important. And as a reminder, in this discussion, eventually there is, is, is worth, I already know from experience, that it's worth linking it somehow. If you answer this and you tell me actually when, when would it be zero under this configuration? So if you answer this question, when is different than zero in general and when, as a special case, is, diff is equal to zero, this is interesting to link it to the concept of equipotential surface uh, we've done in 242, okay, and the work in that case. Because I know that this is something which is always a problem for students to grasp, respond. So to summarize this video, this is work on circuit. So we consider a filiform rigid circuit and a very simple one to begin with, with a little part which can move and carry steady current. And so with the quasi static transformation, we want to compute the work of the internal forces, which is typical definition. The force we calculated in the first video about the uh, forces on circuits, on wires. We use some math like the cyclic property of the uh, triple product here. And so we obtain the key result that the work, infinitesimal work, is, is given by the current times the d phi, okay? which we can generalize as w equal i delta phi in general. And we, I, I also extrapolated this, extended it to any circuit shape as long as they're rigid. And I asked a couple of questions which I would like you to answer. And that's it.